up, City? How about some quick hits instead? Let's go, guys. Manchester United, without a striker to speak of. Rashford and Hoyland both on the bench, Jules. Take that. Uh, they beat Newcastle 3-2. This game was pretty wide open. It was pretty wide open, especially, let's be honest here, in to, from Newcastle towards the United yeah, goal. That the, first goal, Jules, help me. Help me on the first goal. It's just pure luck. Ahmad, Ahmad, the, the ball from Ahmad is not for Mainu. It happens that he falls on to Mainu and then it's a decent finish. But but why I think is there the, nobody within 10 yards of Mainu? Well, so he, he, he makes his run late and you know deep into the box. And I think Ahmad takes too long to play him, first of all. Then, obviously, I think it's Murphy covering or Trippier covering and doesn't go, doesn't push forward enough to play him on off, to play on, on offside, sorry. And then uh, the ball somehow ends up to it. But I still think the Bravka should do better because the, the main shot is not even in the bottom corner. I mean, I think the Bravka should have been better on the Holland goal as well, by the way. And Newcastle had chances. It's a good win for United, of course it is, especially after... The defeat at the weekend against Arsenal, um, I thought a draw probably would have been a fair result. But, but well done to them. Diallo's goal was a bit special, though. Can we yeah, get excited about is. that? That is the and I thought he played well. And yeah, we showed, which we've been saying for a long time, that he should have played more this season than what he did. And guys, Premier League clubs will vote on June the sixth on whether to scrap VAR or not, following a proposal from Wolves, who, as we know, have been very unhappy with VAR this season. I guess decisions like the penalty that was not given for a foul uh, uh, of Amrabat on Anthony Gordon will only fuel the fire. Yeah, I mean, I, that one is 1,000% a penalty. Yeah. If you get a chance to see Anthony Gordon talking after the game, and he's like, me sock. I, I didn't have me sock anymore, which is his way of saying he didn't have his sock anymore because he's a bit scouse. Um, I, I don't understand. I it really, yeah. I, I, I cannot follow this. This is where, if you're Howard Webb, you know, I, if you had any hair, he would lose it. You know, this is where you go and you go and you pummel your VAR, saying like, dude, what the hell are you looking at? I know. Do your freaking job. This is so obvious. Um, and this frustrates people. But on the other hand, does it mean that we need to get rid of VAR? No. It, we, it, we, I, I don't see how the two things are related. You can yeah. make better use of it. It's not VAR's fault that they screwed this up. You can make those mechanisms better. Like, I don't think this is going to pass. It takes 14 votes out of 20. There's no way they're going to get the 14 no. votes out of 20. I think especially part of the reason VAR was introduced, incidentally, is that VAR, without VAR, put it this way, bigger clubs tend to get more of the calls for obvious reasons, mm. right? Um, so why smaller clubs like Wolves, or mid-table clubs, we should say, in Wolves' case, would make this argument is frankly beyond me. Um, PGMOL, uh, they say that correct decisions have gone up from 82% to 96% yep. with VAR. I got to say that 82% figure without VAR is pretty shockingly bad. It is. It um is. And whatever, it's whichever way that they benchmark it. No, but, but, but this is serious. Like I said, if you have a philosophical opposition to VAR because you don't like the game stopping, blah, 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 fine. But there's no footballing decision. Yeah, I agree. There's no footballing reason to get rid of VAR, I put agree. it that way. I agree. There's things you can improve, like you said, like the, 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 the length sometimes of that it takes to make a decision or to get to a decision. Um, and the transparency as yeah, well. People understand yeah. it better. Like here, I think people want to know. Yeah. Exactly. Jules, I can't resist. What did you make of Eric Ten Hag after the game at Old Trafford coming onto the pitch with his microphone? Yeah. And thanking, thanking the supporters. Thanking the fans for the support. Amazing. And to be fair to him, he's right. That, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the, the level of support Old Trafford and United fans have given the club. Yeah, home and away. It's remarkable. Yeah, considering how bad the season has been, how average the season has been, um, has been really, really good and really important. So he was right. He also said we're going to do everything we can to bring the FA Cup back home, back, like back here, which again, you expected him to say that. I like the fact that he took the mic and, and addressed the crowd and everybody and he got the, the right reception too. Let's see what happens on Sunday, where they finish in the league to start with, and then what happened the following weekend in the FA Cup final. You know what I think about it. <laughs> yes, we don't anyway. need to so know. So seeing him talking hasn't changed anything in my head. 
More United, Gav. The Guardian reports that the club have reached out to Ipswich manager Kieran McKenna, who was previously an assistant under Jose Mourinho and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Would it make sense to you if they were going for him and and suck Ten Hag and get McKenna in? I mean, first of all, I think that's the only circumstance in which if I'm Kieran McKenna, I'm coming to the club. I'm not coming back to be Ten Hag's oh, no, assistant. But that's not even the conversation. Right. He, he's had two straight promotions at Ipswich, yeah. reportedly. Um, so... Yeah, by all means, talk to him. If you legitimately haven't made a decision on Ten Hag, you are going through the process. Uh, I'd be, I'd do so in double quick time because obviously then Ipswich are going to say, oh, look, you got a new contract. It's going to cost you a lot of money yeah. if you want our Kieran McKenna. Dude's 38, but he knows the club. I, why not? 